also have seen the very, what we've described over and over again as the imperial presidency. Uh, the, the presidents in this part of the world, regardless of their own personal dispositions, have huge power. They pretty much uh, are the monarchs of all that they survey and, and uh, look actually quite monarchical in the way in which they exercise power. There's very little to stop them. Uh, we've seen, for example, huge expansions in the size of government. Uh, the presidents have no limits. So the constitution is also very profligate, right, as a result of this. The president's power has caused the constitution to become so profligate, which means that the constitution is a very expensive thing to actually operate. And it's not expensive in the sense in which we say, oh, democracy is not cheap. Democracy is not cheap, but it doesn't have to be needlessly expensive. But here you have a constitution that allows the size of government to grow infinitely, right? Just absolutely without limit. You can create more and more office. As long as the president wants an office to be created, he just can mint one today. And he doesn't have to go through parliament to pass an act establishing a ministry of culture and religion or a ministry of railways. He can just name a minister and then the ministry just develops around the minister the next day. Um, the president wants uh, more districts. Come on, more districts. Regions, eh, we, maybe it goes through a little bit of uh, hustle, but not a, you know, not a big deal. You can get an office, a region established. You know, so we have created a system where the constitution is becoming quite costly to operate regardless of who is in power. And we also don't have a system where it appears that once you get elected into government here, once the system, this is a country where the, the citizens exercise their, their, their rights as, as the people, we the people, about once a year, once every four years, sorry. So once we elect a government, we are pretty much the government takes it as a license to rule unhindered for four years. Very little public participation. And it's not just because citizens are unwilling, that's also one factor, there's no real demand. But in some countries, you know, you have actually a right to participate in a number of decisions that the government makes on a regular basis. And sometimes in the South African constitution, for example, if parliament were to pass a law and failed to actually consult particular stakeholders before passing that law, that law can be, con de can be deemed unconstitutional. And it has happened with some laws. So that you have a right to public participation in the legislative process not at the, at the grace of parliament. Here sometimes parliament calls you, oh, CDD, uh, we, we have this law, can you come and uh, we'll do a retreat? No, you have a right to public participation. But here we don't. Essentially, uh, the mercy of, of the legislative uh, uh, branch. Mm -hmm.